Good morning. Glad to have you with me this morning. Uh, join me in uh, turning in your Bible to the 19th Psalm. And uh, we're going to go back there and uh, pick up uh, again as David is telling us uh, about the importance of the Word of God and how uh, the Word of God actually uh, reveals uh, who God is. And we're going to be picking up at the end. Uh, of the eighth verse, there's a phrase there that I really didn't uh, say much about yesterday that I want us to look look at uh, because I think it leads us then naturally into uh, the ninth verse uh, for today. And so again, grab your Bible or your phone and look with me uh, to the 19th Psalm. Uh, while you're doing that, let me again encourage you, uh, if you will, uh, ask you nicely uh, to like and share uh, these videos. Uh, as again, that helps um, again uh, helps put it in front of uh, more people. Or uh, some of you, I, I've noticed, I've seen uh, in the in the statistics are doing watch parties. Again, that helps uh, put uh, put the word of God in front uh, of more people. Uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, and we just pray that um, God will uh, use it in a wonderful way. Uh, just amazed when um, see the numbers uh, of how many people are uh, watching uh, these videos, uh, two, three hundred at a time. Uh, just uh, amazing uh, to me the capabilities we have here. And uh, remind you that tonight, at uh, 6 30 uh, we'll be back here uh, again uh, or on youtube whichever one you uh, find easiest to access and we will go back into the baptist uh, faith and message and continue to look uh, at the, uh, the 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 one document that uh, summarizes what uh, what southern baptist churches uh, actually um, believe now again because we are autonomous and every church is free um, we we have churches who don't uh, follow this exactly uh, but this is the stated belief uh, of a genuine southern baptist church and so we'll be looking there uh, again tonight uh, just again amazed at that last week i uh, had some um, almost 700 people uh, who uh, were uh, watching as we discussed uh, the, uh, the the doctrine of God. And uh, so join us tonight uh, at 6.30. All right, I'm going to guess that by now you've got your Bible. And so we're going to pick up again uh, at the end of verse 8. Just again, kind of get a run and start into this. The first six verses, uh, David had uh, been telling his uh, readers uh, that uh, nature itself declares that there is a God. Uh, then picking up in verse 7, he begins to explain uh, that the Word of God details who that God is. Uh, and so he's uh, begun that task here uh, in these verses and explaining the value and the importance uh, of the Word of God. And the little phrase that uh, I want us to pick up again, uh, starting in verse 8, uh, is the phrase, enlightening the eyes. Uh, again, speaking of the Word of God, again, if you back up, he says, the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. So he says the commandments, the Word of God, uh, is pure. Uh, they enlighten the eyes. And I think all of us, uh, the symbolism there doesn't escape us. We understand uh, what David is saying. It, it, the, the Word of God. God uh, turns on the light. The Word of God uh, opens our eyes. The Word of God makes it uh, easier for us to see and brings us uh, understanding and brings us uh, knowledge and insight uh, into the Word of God or, or into the, the person uh, of God. And as the Word of God enlightens our eyes uh, and uh, reveals to us who God is, uh, that leads us very nicely into uh, what David then says in, in verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous uh, altogether. Uh, and so as our eyes are 
opened as we have understanding of who uh, God is, David says that brings us then to the fear of the Lord. Now, the fear of the Lord uh, is a phrase that I think uh, probably most in the church we um, understand that, but uh, I am concerned that maybe uh, some who don't have a great deal of uh, church or scriptural background uh, may um, misunderstand that phrase a little bit. And so I want to make that uh, clear. Uh, when he says the fear of the Lord, he's not talking about uh, that we should look at God like, um, like some people uh, would look at a snake or a spider. Uh, or a rat, where where you know it's not a matter of having that uh, that that horror, uh, that trembling fear uh, when it comes to the things of God. Uh, but His Word, David says, enlightens us, opens our eyes, so that uh, we have the fear of the Lord. And what he means by fear of the Lord, uh, again, is not terror, uh, but instead uh, he is referring to uh, recognizing God's uh, rightful place as the as the king uh, of uh, of kings, recognizing and uh, honoring His power, His holiness, His righteousness, uh, His glory, uh, all, all those attributes uh, of of who God is, and so uh, that uh, that that make God uh, who uh, He is. He says, and again, look at that. He says, "The fear of the Lord is clean," or. Or, or pure, so he's not saying a, a, a trembling in uh, fear uh, like you would at a you know at a scary movie or uh, again a snake in the floor or, or something like that. Uh, but again, um, one good word I think for me um, anyway to understand it is the respect. Uh, of the Lord, having the respect for him, the reverence uh, to who uh, God is, enduring forever the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether, the verse says. It's that uh, opening of our eyes that causes us to reverence God and respect God uh, for who he is then that draws us uh, into a uh, into a right uh, relationship uh, with God uh, brings us into that relationship uh, with Jesus Christ. Uh, Wiersbe in his commentary uh, brings out a, a good point, I think, about uh, this text as well. This idea uh, of fear of the Lord uh, is again um, the um, it. Uh, I said it. it comes back to the idea of if you reverence and respect um, the Lord, then you'll reverence and respect his word, um, you know, or, or vice versa. Uh, I, I think of it, uh, you know, as I look at that, one of the things that uh, crosses my mind is, is David is saying that we should have uh, a reverence and a respect uh, for God and who he is and for his word, because he goes on, he's, it's all he's talking about uh, in this section. Again, he uh, this verse, he continues and says, the judgments of the Lord are true uh, and righteous forever. And so that, uh, I think, brings us to the question this morning of, uh, of what exactly is the problem? Uh, why is it that so many fail uh, to reverence and respect God uh, for who he is? Why do so many uh, seem to not have this, this fear of the Lord uh, that David is talking about? And you know, I think we could point to uh, several different um, reasons for that. I think there are several causes uh, of that in our society today. I certainly think uh, that, that a great deal of it comes back to uh, people not being uh, raised uh, in that respect, not being raised with that, uh, with that uh, education to uh, that learning uh, to uh, fear the Lord. 
but um, can I share with you what I think is actually uh, a bigger, uh, bigger piece uh, of the problem than the fact uh, that many people have not been raised um, in the fear of the Lord. I think it's that many people today are not seeing those who claim to love God and be servants of God exercise the fear of the Lord. In other words, they don't see those who claim to be Christians, followers of Jesus Christ, living with an abundance of reverence and respect um, for God, uh, for God's house, for God's word. And so therefore, uh, they have come to the conclusion that if, if those who call themselves by his name, if those who call themselves Christian, uh, call themselves by the name of Christ, they don't have any real reverence or respect uh, for the Lord, uh, then why should we? Uh, I, you know, I don't, I, I've never heard anybody necessarily uh, just blatantly out loud make that statement. Uh, I think perhaps it's more of a, a subconscious uh, thing that happens, but um, can we be so naive to uh, to believe that uh, people ride up and down the roads in front of our churches uh, and, and see our half full parking lots um, and uh, if that much uh, and not think well something's wrong there uh, you know they, they're not those people are not going to their church um, can they uh, can we be so naive uh, to believe that the people we work with our family our neighbors our friends um, hear the the jokes we tell hear the things we say uh, see how we treat others see how we treat each other uh, see how we treat people of different uh, races and nationalities um, see those things um, and, and not somewhere in the recesses of their mind uh, question our reverence for God. Uh, I think we have to be very naive um, to, to believe that's not happening. Uh, and so, uh, you know, let, let me give you a, a, a second illustration of that. Uh, and you've probably all uh, seen a vehicle like this when you, uh, you know, walk into a parking lot somewhere or something, you'll see a car and uh, man, that thing looks like it's been drove down a couple miles of bad road uh, by a blindfolded driver. It's bounced off every tree and, uh, you know, it's muddy, it's beat up, you know, the headlights, you know, it's hanging out and the taillights missing and you, you know the car. Uh, four different size tires on it. Uh, you know, when you walk by going into the store, you know, you glance in the window and there's trash in the floor and, you know, the windows are filthy and, you know, there's a screwdriver stuck in to crank it with other than the key and, you know, I don't know, there's a great big old dog flopped up in the back seat. You've seen the car. Uh, we've all seen that car uh, and walking through the parking lot. Um, and we all know that if we went to get in that car, we probably wouldn't um, dust off our feet. We'd, we'd probably just get in. You know, it, you know, if we got in the car and we had our lunch and we dropped a French fry, we probably wouldn't spend a great deal of time trying to find that French fry um, and, and get it out of the car because we just look and say, well, it just blends right in with the rest of the mess. You know, they don't have any concern or compassion or, or I don't guess compassion, but they don't have any concern about the cleanliness or the care of their vehicle. Why should I? On the other hand, we've all got in cars um, that were well maintained. They had been detailed. Uh, they were obviously valuable and valued. Not only were they valuable, uh, but on the other hand, it may be a car that honestly is not valuable, but it is valued to the owner. That owner is taking, that owner is washing, waxing, you know, detailing that car. Uh, you know, I said it may be 40 years old and 
you know, it, you know, it may not, you know, it may be on its last legs or something, but obviously that owner is valuing that vehicle. And so you or I, we're much more likely when we get in that vehicle uh, to value it as well, to be careful uh, that we don't spill things or drop things or we don't throw anything in the floor. Why? Because the owner values or, watch out, reverences or respects his car. And so when I get in it, I'm going to try to do the very same thing. Well, folks, I think that's where we are in 2020. Um, we have come to a point um, where the world sees us treating God and his house and his word like a dirty, run-down, trash-filled car, and they don't think anything about throwing their trash on our God. I think the day has come for God's people to step up, to have their eyes opened and understand uh, the Word of God shows us the fear of the Lord uh, is pure. It endures forever. The judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. That we start living, again, if we believe the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous, we're going to live by them daily, not just when they suit us. Uh, and we're going to be that example to our family, to our co-workers, uh, to our neighbors of that person who takes care uh, of their vehicle. Uh, and and I, I apologize for comparing God to a uh, to a vehicle, but I think most of us can recognize and uh, understand uh, that analogy. Um, you know that uh, when, when we see somebody who takes care of their home, their car, um, their self, um, we have more respect as well. Um, on the other hand, um, you know when they when they don't have any concern for their again, for their car, their home, their own self, then generally speaking, we don't have much either. Folks, can I challenge you today to think about that a little bit, to let that mull around in your mind, percolate on that for a while. And uh, let's just think, spend some time today watching and being careful and thinking. Uh, what do people that I work with, that I live with in my neighborhood, what, what is their opinion of God based on what they see in me? How they see me treat him, how they see me respond to him, how they see me obey his word. What are they learning? Appreciate you tuning in today. Hope you have a great day. Again, join us back here tonight uh, at uh, 630. And, uh, take some time today. Just pay attention. Uh, watch yourself and say, what do others see uh, about Jesus uh, in me? Have a great day. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning.